talk about gut health, um, the first few things that come in our mind is our digestive health, right? Uh, we think about acidity, we think about bloating, we think about constipation or diarrhea, right? But what if I tell you that the gut is actually playing a very bigger and important role? We know the basics of uh, the digestive health, right? We know that the gut transports food, stores energy, removes the waste from the body, we know the basics. But what we don't know is that it has a very bigger and a more complex job than we just think of. So the gut health, uh, it actually, um, over the past two years of COVID, which has a very big impact on all of us, uh, the gut health has been, the research says that the gut health is um, not just connected to our digestive health, but it's also connected to numerous other aspects of health like diabetes, cholesterol, thyroid, uh, obesity, and even cancer. So now that we know that the gut is not just connected to our digestive health, but it's also connected to other parts of the body, what exactly is this gut doing and what is this exact role that it's actually you know, uh, so important to other body, uh, parts of the body? So if we look closer, uh, the gut health, the gut has, uh, is, a, is, a, is home to trillions of bacteria. Okay, if I have to put it in simple words, uh, the, our gut is home to trillions of bacteria called the microbiome, right? Um, this microbiome is a home to a lot of uh, microorganisms. It could be good microorganisms as well as bad microorganisms. Now, what happens is, if I have to give you an example, the, let's take a healthy adult who is sleeping on time, who is eating healthy food, who is uh, managing his time and um, also is exercising well. Now that particular uh, uh, individual will have a lot of good healthy bacteria in, uh, in their gut. Okay, And uh, this gut uh, bacteria are actually beneficial to their gut health. Versus somebody who is, has a very poor diet, who is not exercising, has a very sedentary lifestyle, um, who is uh, not sleeping on time or not following a particular routine, will have a lot of bad bacteria in them. Now this gut uh, and the gut microbiome that I spoke about actually helps us detoxify our body. It transports food from one, um, one end to the other. It helps us store energy. Um, it helps us transport food from one side to the other. It uh, synthesizes vitamins and minerals, but it is also connected to other body parts. Now what happens is um, there are these bacteria that I'm speaking about because they are so large in number there are good bacteria and bad bacteria. These good bacteria, they uh, prevent inflammation in the body versus the bad bacteria, they uh, promote inflammation. Okay? The job of the gut is to keep a balance between the both, the good as well as the bad. Now, even for whatever odd reasons, for whatever food that we are eating, for whatever lifestyle that we are leading, if there is a delicate or a slight uh, imbalance in this, um, the delicate balance that the gut is keeping between the good and the bad bacteria, we have, uh, the gut gets distressed, okay? So when the gut is distressed, it can't help us in um, fighting infections, fighting inflammation, fighting our immunity system. And uh, that's the reason a lot of other health issues come into place like, um, uh, like Hashimoto's disease, auto autoimmune disease, uh, diabetes, cholesterol, PCOS, irritable bowel syndrome and so much more related to the gut. Now gut, because why we call it, a, it a, our second brain is because it's a selective barrier between us and the outside world. It's a very hard working uh, organ which is doing its role not just to keep a balance between the good and the bad bacteria, but at the same time it's, I'll uh, quickly show you why it's also affecting other parts of the body as well. Now this uh, imbalance in gut, it's called gut dysbiosis. Now whenever we have or whenever we eat a lot of processed food or a lot of um, foods which are uh, full of simple carbohydrates, uh, if we are leading a very unhealthy lifestyle, if you're not sleeping on time, these are all different causes to gut dysbiosis. Uh, when this gut dysbiosis actually uh, take place, we have inflammation on our skin which causes uh, psoriasis, dermatitis, and acne. Um, if um, if the, immuni the immunity system also gets compromised. So let me tell you that 70% of our immunity system is located in the gut. Now you can imagine that every time you're picking up food and you're eating, you're e either fighting a disease or you're feeding a disease, right? So 
So every time that you are eating something unhealthy, it's actually related to um, you know um, either the, the health of our immunity system. If there is uh, a lot of inflammation in the body, if you are eating um, processed food, or if you are smoking, or if there is alcohol involved, or if you are not leading a healthy lifestyle where you have a lot of stress in your uh, life, that could also lead to irritable bowel syndrome, which is IBS. Uh, it could lead to intolerances like uh, gluten intolerance or celiac disease. It could lead to um, lactose intolerance as well. The gut dysbiosis also affects our metabolism and it plays a very important role in hormones, especially for women. So um, the gut microbiome, the microorganisms play a very vital role in estrogen regulation. So as, as women, one out of five women nowadays have either PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome, irregular periods, acne, um, endometriosis, infertility, and it could all lead back to an unhealthy gut, right? So as I said, that every time we are eating something, we are either feeding a disease or we are fighting a disease. And of course, uh, for today's topic, we will be talking much more in detail about how mental health is connected with our gut health. So before I go forward, I want to ask all of you, so imagine you uh, are eating a piece of uh, cake or if you are eating a croissant or you are uh, eating a cupcake or something which is uh, completely processed. Now how do you feel after having that, right? Your body talks to you. Either it will talk to you through some signs or some symptoms or it will try to tell you that okay whatever you just ingested maybe I'm not liking it or maybe I liked it a lot, I got the sugar rush. So, Please tell me, please feel free to tell me what do you think can be the signs of a bad gut? It could be burping. You feel heavy, you, you feel like you're, you can't fit into your pants anymore after a meal, that's called bloating. You, you burp a lot. Heart burns, yes, acidity, heart burns. What else? Think, think. You must be eating something, you must be conscious, your body talks to you uh, during this time after a meal. You usually feel sluggish, you feel sleepy. Uh, a lot of times your stomach comes out like you feel like what what did I just eat right um, yes of course these are the signs and symptoms of a bad gut but let me tell you it's much more complex than that before we even get irritable bowel syndrome anybody here who has been diagnosed with uh, irritable bowel syndrome or any kind of intolerances like anybody who's not eating uh, gluten or lactose let me tell you that the irritable bowel syndrome even before it comes to you even before you get it the body starts signaling us way prior to that. The signaling is through low energy levels. So you start feeling sluggish. As you said that after eating meals you feel heavy. Uh, you feel sleepy all the time. You keep yawning all the time. You don't like to wake up in the morning. That could all be the signs of low energy levels and basically a bad gut. A uh, few acne is popping out here and there, on your, especially on your forehead, is, uh, could be one of the reasons of bad gut. Um, feelings either too sleepy throughout the day or not getting any sleep at all could also be a reason of a bad gut uh, either extremely painful gas or passing very smelly gas could also be uh, the body tries trying to tell you that okay something is off something that you're eating is wrong and we really need to uh, work on your food uh, habits uh, the one thing that I personally feel is quite in um, trend right now is the brain fog uh, the brain fog is basically where um, you feel a lot of confusion, you second guess things a lot, you feel like your judgment is very cloudy. Although we usually uh, mix it up with uh, low, producti low productivity or stress levels, it could also be one of the signs, major signs of a bad gut. So if you feel like you're getting very irritated, there's a lot of mood swings, um, you get angry a lot, could also all be the reasons of a bad gut. Now, although these are the signs and symptoms of bad gut. Uh, we should now talk about what exactly can we do and can we really eat our way to happiness, right? So, um, have you ever got this feeling of butterflies in your stomach? Or that sensation of that jittery feeling or the sensation of your stomach twisting every time you go for a job interview or you are passing your driver's license? Um, uh, or maybe you're going for an exam, you're going to meet someone new, you're going doing something completely out of your comfort zone. Trust me, I've been doing this from past five years. I've been talking in front of audience from past five years. I've spoken to so many people, but every time I'm in front of an audience, no matter how lovely they are, I still get butterflies in my stomach. 
This sensation is actually my body trying to tell me that I am in sync with my body. Okay, every time you get that twisting stomach feeling or butterflies in your stomach, is your body trying to tell you that your gut is connected to your brain. Right? So every time you get those butterflies, it's actually not bad. It's actually good. So you should be you should be feeling happy that okay, you're in sync with your body. So why this collection uh, connection of gut and brain is called uh, gut brain axis is because um, there are certain chemicals. So if I have to put you uh, put it put it in a simple way, there are these uh, signs of uh, you know a series of chemicals which are connected between our gut and our brain. These chemicals are called neurotransmitters. Now, although there are millions of neurotransmitters, today I will be talking about serotonin. Okay, I hope I'm like you guys are all on the same page with me till now. Great. Uh, so serotonin is because why we are talking about serotonin today is about because it's related to wellness, it's related to happiness, it's related to uh, you know balancing mood and anxiety, and uh, you know you get those feeling when uh, you cook something and it really turns out good and you really enjoy it. So that 30 seconds of happiness when you um, when you are in a business and uh, you take a very uh, a very risky decision and it actually turns out in your favor that 30 seconds of happiness or maybe you win a lottery and you you know you feel that 30 seconds of emo gush gush of emotions those emotions those sensations are actually controlled by serotonin so every time you are happy the serotonin levels increase every time you are feeding your body with healthy nutritious food your serotonin increases and the moment your serotonin increases you feel happy you have a good mental state and you are basically preventing depression 95% of a serotonin is produced in the gut by the gut bacteria so now as i said all going all the way back everything that you are eating is actually also controlling here right so each and every food item that we are eating is controlling uh, is been controlled by the gut bacteria and eventually it controls our mental state so to put it in a very simple way if you eat a bowl of salad with a good fat proteins probiotics and complex carbs you will have a much greater rise in serotonin and less inflammation in the body and by inflammation i need uh, i mean acne ibs constipation diarrhea dermatitis hair fall and every time you are uh, consuming junk food or processed or uh, a lot of uh, uh, refined sugars that's when you're there's a significant decrease in serotonin and uh, a lot more inflammation right so when i speak to uh, my clients especially when they are uh, suffering from pcos my women clients um, they tell me that they have been eating a lot of ice creams chocolates uh, maybe because of PMSing they feel like they crave chocolates or they want uh, a piece of cake during their PMSing and we all feel that right we've all been there done that now if you continuously keep doing that without zero physical activity and um, you there's a lot of disturbances in your sleep patterns there's a lot of inflammation in the body so these are the people who also get a lot of painful periods is because there's a lot of inflammation already there in the body now there are different markers to test if you how much inflammation you have in your body and we can always work on it but yes it's all related to the gut so this serotonin it's not just responsible for your emotions right it's not just like a small thing uh, that it's taking care of it is actually taking care of most of your body parts it's taking care of your mood or your bowel movements it also controls your uh, sleep patterns it uh, also supports your bone health right so this serotonin it's not just taking care of your food pattern, your emotions, but it's also so much responsible for other body parts as well. So now you know that um, the foods that we should eat, which I will be talking about in detail, um, actually will help you with all these aspects. It's not just one thing. It's not just happiness, but it's also all these things. And ideally, it's a holistic approach, right? You need to be physically well, mentally well. Obviously, nutrition, uh, in, in terms of your nutrition, you need to be uh, good and you need to be physically well as well. So, of course, uh, that's where nutrition steps in and a nutritionist steps in. Um, the right diet strengthens the gut. Okay. Uh, with this right diet, it will improve your overall health and well-being. So, today, I will be talking about six very different but easy ways 
to control your, uh, to improve your gut, which will make sure that there is enough or more productivity in your personal as well as in your professional life. Starting with number one, just cut the crap. Quite straightforward, isn't it? But the CRAP, there's a uh, meaning for this. Carbonated drinks, it could be sugar or sugar free both. Uh, refined sugars, which could mean cookies, cereals, flavored yogurt, sweetened uh, yogurts, artificial additives like sweets, candies, alcohol, processed food, which could be either um, sausages, cured meats, ice creams, and so much party food that we eat, right? So these are food items um, which actually create a lot of bad bacteria in our body. So if I have to put it in a simple way, these crap foods increase bad bacteria, increases inflammation, decreases serotonin and leading to a lot of illnesses. Low serotonin level can actually create so many issues. Uh, you feel tired all the time, there's a lot of burping and these are, we feel like these are, this is just a digestive system trying to act, oh it will do its work. It's actually not that, the digestive system is very clever. It's, it will start giving you these signs, the burping, the, the, moody, uh, the moodiness or the irritation and eventually when you don't work on it, that's when you will have certain issues like intolerances or irritable uh, bowel syndrome. The next uh, one we have here is eat the rainbow and by rainbow I mean colorful fruits and vegetables. The more the color in your diet, the more the fiber in your diet, the uh, simple and better the gut. Okay, the gut loves fiber, be it insoluble fiber which we can't easily digest and be it soluble fiber we can easily digest. All different kinds of fruits and vegetables like raspberries, blueberries, apples, bananas, artichokes, legumes, uh, carrots, potatoes, very easy to find in the supermarket, cheaper than cakes and chocolates and ice cream um, and uh, to, gives you a lot of biodiversity in the diet. Okay, so it increases your good bacteria, which we need, which we need because we want to strengthen our immunity, we need to strengthen our uh, digestive health, we need to strengthen our mental health and also keep our energy levels elevated. These food items uh, not only promote a feeling of fullness, but it also gives you a lot of other, it also plays a very important role in other aspects like it will help you keep your blood sugar levels in check. So there is not enough of spike when you are eating these food items versus when you eat an, a pastry you will you will have an initial uh, spike in your blood sugar levels uh, it will help you keep your blood pressure in check so people who are suffering from high di uh, diabetes and high blood pressure can actually take resort to all these foods um, it will keep your um, hydration level in check because it will keep you fuller for long and because it's keeping you fuller for long you will not end up overeating in the next meal so if I have to give you one example, very simple example, say you are on an empty stomach, you are eating a piece of cake, okay, maybe you will feel really good, that sugar rush will be there, you will feel really happy. After two hours, you will feel hungrier, not just hungry but hungrier and you will end up overeating in the next meal. So what it's doing is, because it's not supplementing you with fiber, it's not supplementing you with any kinds of vitamins and minerals and uh, any important uh, nutrients it's actually just causing a very big sugar rush in the body and basically sugar crash later on. Versus if you are eating a bowl of, um, a plate of meals which include a good fat which could be avocados or eggs, fiber rich foods like green leafy vegetables and uh, artichokes and legumes and if you are eat com also combining it with good uh, protein, this meal will keep you fuller for long, maybe 4 to 5 hours. It will keep your blood sugar levels in check because of the protein and good fat and fiber and you will not end up overeating in the next meal that you consume. This way you are not just managing your sugar levels and your cholesterol but you are also managing your waistline which is basically your weight. Number three is uh, drink more water. No matter how much emphasis I can put, it's never enough. It's because as cliche as it sounds, it's actually very true. The diet industry talks about di uh, supplementation. It talks very much in detail about diet, it talks about exercise and it talks about the different kinds of therapies like vitamin therapy or mental therapy. But if you are not consuming enough water, trust me, nothing will work. 
because 90 percent of our body is water and water is required or hydration is required for most of our bodily functions from regulating our hormones to regulating our body temperature to um, keeping our blood sugar levels in check keeping our uh, uh, blood pressure in check it is playing a very important role it's also important in the synthesis of vitamins so trust me when you eat a pop a pill of any kind of supplementation it could be vitamin d it could be b12 it could be iron but if you are not drinking enough water none of these vitamins and minerals will actually be synthesized and it'll just go to waste so if you're not hydrating enough it's actually very important for the mucus layer in the intestine so there's a layer of uh, mucus inside the intestines which keeps the food inside the gut and not lets it leak outside so people who have leaky gut they have an issue here right and of course um, if you feel like water is something which is very plain and you don't like feel like drinking it maybe it's there in front of you but then you forget about it you can always choose from herbal teas, green teas, soups, smoothies, green juices, uh, infused water and um, uh, you know lemon chia water for your daily hydration. As you said um, back there that uh, you felt very, very sleepy throughout the day, right? It could be the reason for a bad girl, it could be a reason for an unhealthy lifestyle, it could be a reason for hormonal imbalance, but it's actually very true. If you do not get enough sleep, you will feel irritated the next morning you will keep feeling that you want to go off to sleep after meals especially uh, in research it says that one extra hour of sleep so say for example if you're sleeping for six hours a day if you increase it by seven hours a day it will actually impact depression in a good way uh, it will actually prevent uh, irritable bowel syndrome or ibs and will also help in pcos so for people who feel like they are not sleeping well, this could also one. I mean, increasing your sleep could also be one of the factors of a bad gut. Obviously, this goes, goes without saying. I don't have to talk much about exercise. Is because not just your gut health, but your cardiac health and your mental health will improve if you are exercising. Now, when I say exercise, it does not necessarily mean going to the gym. Not everybody has the luxury and liberty to go to the gym, but. If you are working out at least 30 to 45 minutes a day, it could be going to the park to play with your children, it could be going for an hour of swimming, it could be going for a walk, it could be dancing, it could be listening to music and jogging, it could be just anything. But that 30 to 45 minutes of you working out consistently, not regularly, but consistently, will give you a release of endorphins. It will help you with happy hormones. And you always feel that after a workout, nobody's ever sad. Everybody feels the glow, everybody feels the, the, the gush of emotions, the gush of happiness is because of serotonin levels also naturally increase if you work out uh, on a daily basis. Increase in pre and probiotics. I feel uh, a lot of people are taking supplementations for increasing their pre and probiotics. And by pre and probiotics are these food items um, like uh, yogurt, sauerkraut, kimchi, pickle, uh, kombucha, apple cider vinegar, um, leeks, asparagus, garlic, onion, bananas. These are different kinds of pre and probiotics which will not only help you increase your serotonin levels but they actually uh, help you in keeping your gut levels in check. So the good bacteria and the bad bacteria, the probiotics and prebiotics have live bacteria in them which actually help you keep your gut health in check. Uh, so if I have to put this in a very easy way, uh, the E stands for, E is for elimination of pro-inflammatory foods which we spoke about, the crap foods which could be processed and uh, refined food. Uh, a stands for uh, anti-inflammatory meals which is basically the colorful fruits and vegetables that we spoke about. S stands for uh, diet and workout and support to your gut health and E stands for enriching your microbiomes or the microorganisms which are basically the good bacteria, bad bacteria which we will get from pro and prebiotics. I want to know um, what do you think when you think about gut health, when you think about mental health, what do you think uh, can be the reason of its, the connection? Or what do you think that whenever you eat something, you're, you're not happy, right? So what is that one food which you feel like it's really not 
giving you good results but it's actually causing a lot of trouble but you end up eating it eventually so if you guys can tell me what is that one guilty pleasure that you would like to do but then you don't do it because of you know your gut health coffee yes coffee for me as well cakes rice rice okay actually rice is a probiotic sir so it's actually helping you but it depends on what quantity and where you, i mean what is the quantity what you're eating along with it and what you do for the rest of 23 hours chocolates yes so these are our guilty pleasures right we can't always skip them and to be very honest i'm not even asking you to skip them because the moment i say no to something the human psychology works in a way that we'll end up craving it more so i'm not saying no to it but i'm all all i'm asking you is to follow 80 and 20 ratio where 80 percent you're eating all this natural home cooked meals and unprocessed food whole foods versus 20 percent you're consuming your guilty pleasures and keep them at in limited quantities and make sure that you are not consuming them in large quantities the moment you label your food as cheat you label it as a bad calories high calories it will actually impact your brain it will it will you will not nourish from that food no food is bad so never call it a cheat meal never call it uh, a bad meal but just make sure that you are consu you're conscious about it try to figure out different ways to be natural to give natural remedies to my clients okay heal my clients with the power of food let food be the medicine and also make sure that i'm giving them something without many supplementations and uh, make sure that I am giving them food items which are easily available around them, uh, which fits into their lifestyle, which is uh, practical, sustainable, economical. It's not just about, okay, fine, you have some issues, I'm going to give you a diet. It's actually me fitting the diet into their lifestyle. So when I have to talk about lifestyle, it also means that uh, I have to make sure that I'm looking at the client's uh, office timings. I'm making sure what they what meals they carry their likes their dislikes their ethnic background i have to make sure that uh, what food allergies they have and uh, of course how can i then give them a diet which is at least 80 percent natural and 20 percent with supplementation so when i speak about serotonin i wanted to do the same i wanted to fi figure out or research about serotonin which can give us which we can get naturally and rather than popping a pill here are four drugless ways to increase serotonin okay number one is sunshine we know the weather outside is very bad and we can't go out every single day most of us in dubai are indoors but trust me 30 minutes of sunshine early in the morning walking barefoot on the grass that will actually elevate your serotonin levels eventually increasing your uh, elevating your mood and making you feel happy if you ever go to the park, you see your, your children playing, you, you go and play with them, do it barefoot. Walking on the grass will actually elevate your uh, mood. Number two is uh, a random act of kindness. So if you, are ever, uh, if you ever meet someone and they want your help and then you go out of your way to help them or maybe, uh, maybe somebody is stuck somewhere and you, maybe you pick them up and you drop them somewhere, it will actually give you a helper's high that's what it's called so the helpers high helping someone else will actually elevate your own mood so this could also be a one of the ways to increase your serotonin levels number three is exercise yes 30 to 45 minutes as i said uh, increases your hormonal uh, you know your hormones are happy hormones called endorphins and also it increases your serotonin levels naturally which is also an anti natural antidepressant so serotonin is also called as natural antidepressant. Lastly, we have mindful meditation. When we think of meditation, we feel uh, like shutting off when somebody said, right? We think of just removing all the thoughts which are coming to our mind. We feel like we should always incorporate uh, positive thoughts in our mind while, you know, uh, meditating. We should remove all dysfunctional and bad negative thoughts from our mind. But Trust me, every time you sit to meditate and you tell yourself that, okay, no bad thoughts, you will think of bad thoughts. So mindful meditation is not about removing something or adding something or being or shut to, you know, to shut yourself out of, the, uh, of that present moment, but it's actually about awareness. Somebody talked, uh, spoke about awareness. Yes, to be in the present, to make sure that these thoughts are coming to you but then you're not doing anything about it. You don't have to modify them. You don't have to act upon them. You just have to let them come and go.